Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, lesson 12, I'll be taking a look at CQRS, Command Query Responsibility Segregation, kind of describing the pattern and how it applies to microservices. When we talk about CQRS, Command Query Responsibility Segregation, this pattern is really all about separating commands from queries. So let me explain the problem statement first. Here we have a typical application where we have a web interface on the right-hand side going through an application all the way to the database and back. And you can see the bottom path are all the writes to the database, and the top path are the reads to the database. Now we have a couple of problems that plague almost every software application. And that is this. First, it's with the model, because reads and writes have different concerns. So in other words, usually when we do a write to a database, we write entities. But when we do reads, we read aggregated data. And so that's our first problem. But the second one, which is more important, is the fact that we can't really optimize for reads and writes. In other words, if we want to speed up the reads from our database, what we can do is continue to add index after index after index to the tables, which is going to significantly increase the performance of those reads or those queries. However, our writes or our commands are going to significantly slow down. They'll start to time out and we'll start to get complaints from users about uh, updates and deletes and inserts and all these kind of commands. So what we usually do in response is to start removing indexes in order to speed up the writes, which slows down the reads. And basically, we always end up in this compromise. And a great way to define compromise is the fact, well, everybody agrees, but no one's really truly happy. And so we're not optimized for reads nor writes. It's kind of this balance, this happy path. Well, let's take a look at this pattern to solve this problem, because the first thing CQRS does is it says, well, let's tackle the model first and have a separate model for queries and a separate model for commands. The command model is typically an entity-based model, whereas the query model is typically more of an aggregation, a data grid. Most teams can get to this point, and as a matter of fact, I've been doing this for a dog's age, it seems, in terms of commands really being entities and then queries being aggregate kind of objects. Sometimes we call them presentation objects. And the middle tier really takes these entities from the database, which are objects, aggregates them into a different data model called a presentation objects, and then sends those up to the UI. And that's the first stage, but it doesn't really optimize the database. So the second part of CQRS is really saying, let's optimize the database now to where we split the database into a read database and a write database. And then what I'm basically doing is describing the pattern for you. So writes come into a fully optimized database for writes. In other words, no indexes whatsoever in that database. And the read path coming back is fully optimized for reads which means that there, there are indexes everywhere in that table. And so now we have maximum performance for both reads and writes. And what we do is we have database synchroniz synchronization from the write over to the read database. A great pattern of architecture. However, the problem is on the left-hand side here. And it's synchronizing that data. This is usually too slow. And it's also error prone. And so this is what's usually plagued uh, CQRS. But as we observe here, what if we took the application that has that query and the command and actually split that into two separately deployed units of software? And if we start to look, it's like, well, hmm, that's an interesting thought. As a matter of fact, each of those separately deployed units of software has its own single purpose. So we're still using that single responsibility principle, and each has its own data. And you know what that sounds like? That sounds like microservices. And so let's how see how we can actually apply CQRS to microservices. Because what we have on this far left-hand side is a customer demographics service. Now, let me ask you this. What is the model in that microservice optimized for? Is it optimized for reads or writes? You might think, well, <clears throat> actually, that's a good point. We have to have kind of two models within this microservice. One, to update entities, and two, to return an aggregation of these. And so that's one problem. But more so, what's that database? 
optimize for and neither reads nor writes and so what we can do is this watch we can take that customer demographic service and we split it into two services we split it into a customer demographics query service and this contains name and address and and bill to and ship to addresses and payment information and now we can actually have an update service as well now Rather than trying to synchronize those two databases, which we can try to do, a very typical implementation here, by the way. Oh, and I might back up. It's not only the model in the database, it's the scalability as well. How many reads do we have? We have 300,000 reads. How many writes do we have? About 3,000 a day. And you can kind of see that there is a, a, a huge difference in scalability needs in terms of the small amount of writes to the massive amount of reads. And so this is a good use case for splitting these two services up. But what about the data? So each one has its own model, but typically we get rid of the database on the query service. And what we do in the update service or the write service is that we expose a cache. We have a cache of all of our data. And we replicate or distribute that cache to the query service. So that when an update does occur in the write service, the update service, now we synchronize that cache through either replication or distribution. And this could be either like Apache Ignite, it could be Gemfire, Coherence, Hazelcast, Memcast D, all of these kind of caching tools, or it could be simple messaging, updating a map inside our query service. Now, what we have is two services that are fully optimized for query and update, which now we have a single source of record, and now we can scale these and optimize each of these for maximum performance. And this is a great example of how to leverage CQRS in a microservices ecosystem. As a matter of fact, if you want to get more information about CQRS, you can go to Martin Fowler's website um, and under his blicky cqrs.html. And yes, in fact, that is my favorite picture of Martin Fowler. Um, or also um, from a Microsoft.net perspective, uh, implementing this kind of pattern within Azure, you can actually go to the Microsoft.com uh, link that I've provided you there. But what a great pattern that I've been thinking about for 15 years, but never really had an opportunity to implement until microservices really came about. So this has been Software Architecture Monday, Lesson 12, CQRS and Microservices. My name is Mark Richards. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned next week where we'll have another architecture lesson for you. Thank you very much.